are, that are stored in the memory and are loaded by the processor, which is instructions and data. So what is an instructions? It is, instruction usually is fetch from a memory. You know the word fetch, right? It's mean bring from the memory to the processor. So data um, instruction usually is fetched from the um, memory to a processor to be executed. Instruction is a coded information that can be executed. So it's just fetched from the memory to processor. And this series of instruction is basically a operations that consists of a bunch of instructions that is operated on data. Right. And what is data? Data is an operand to the instructions, right? For example, if I have add R1, R2. Have you seen assembly before? Have you seen this? No? Okay. So add is an instructions. It is to tell the processor that what we want to do is to add these two things. R1 and R2 are memory storage, register one and register two. So what this instruction tells the processor to do is to go to this two register, fetch the data, and add them, right? So this is a data and an instructions. Okay, so if not, next we'll talk about a concepts of memory. Memory has, um, there are two types of memory. The first is called a primary storage. And primary storage refer to a fast memory, a cache, a main memory, everything that can be accessed real fast, the processor can access real fast. So a primary storage is basically a fast memory that is used to store a program. So the way memory is stored is that a memory is organized in the way that n bit can be fetched and retrieved at one time. When I say a word, different computer has different size of word. That's why I'm saying a word is n bit. <coughs> Regular PC now, how many bits in the word? You know, your PC would be. Normally, this can be 16 to 64 in current computer architecture. A fast memory like Silicon Graphics, some platform has a 64-bit words. Most computer right now are 32-bit word, right? That is the reason why when you have a program compiled on a 16-bit word, it cannot be run on a 32-bit word because it's interpret size of word differently. And word is a unit that we use to fetch, retrieve, and store data at one time in one basic operations. So we can say that each word has a distinct address in the memory. Now, the terms that you probably are very familiar with, RAM. What does RAM stand for? RAM is random access memory. Why do we call RAM a random access memory? Because any word in a RAM can be accessed in a fixed amount of time, right? If this is your RAM, you have um, a word stored consecutively like this. To access this word or this word, we'll use the same amount of time. That's why it's called random access, okay? It's not sequential. There's no search. Every, every word can be accessed at, with a short fixed time. So like I said before, the primary storage or the memory, we'll discuss this in detail after midterm has a hierarchy. So all the memory mostly will have a small memory on top and the hierarchy keep going. So as you go up and down this hierarchy, the topmost hierarchy is the smallest but the fastest. The bottommost is the biggest, cheapest, but slowest, right? So if you look at this, this would be a cache. L1 cache, this would be a main memory. So this is a memory hierarchy. Every um, processor has a memory hierarchy. 
That's why you see two numbers. You see at least a main memory and a cache, right? The fastest memory is probably a registered, but sometimes they don't count registered as memory because registered is built on board with the processor. Okay? So that is the primary storage. The second type is, a, is called a secondary storage. I guess it's easy to describe secondary storage. It is a disk, a CD-ROM, a tapes, so on and so forth. So what happened is that when you want to execute a program, your program stored in, on a hard disk, every time you want to execute it, it has to be transferred from a hard disk to a main memory and keep going up the memory hierarchy. Because the hard disk is too slow for a processor to process. That's why when you buy a computer, the more memory it has, the faster it will be. Because it can fit more things in the memory. Normally, when you transfer data from hard disk to a memory, when you used up the memory, swapping will occur. You have to swap some part out of the memory back to the disk, put some new thing back to the memory. And this swapping back and forth path um, part make it slow, make your computer run slower. That's why if you have a lot of memory and the whole thing can fit in the memory, then it's dandy, everything is fast, right? Okay? So that's story about the memory. Now, let's talk a little bit about the arithmetics and logic unit. This is core for short and ALU. Probably the most important things on your processor board. So what is the ALU? ALU located inside the processor. It is the unit in the processor that is used to execute operations. For example, if I'm giving you a data type of, of integer, what kind of operations do we have on integer? What, what can you do to an integer in the basic unit? You can add, you can do that, you can do that, you can compare integer, right? There are a bunch of operations can be done on an integer. So that part is called operations. And operands is data that these instructions are executed upon. So for integer, it can be 4, 8, 16, whatever, right? So that part is called an operands. So basically, if you have a memory that's stored, each location store a word. If you have 4 here, you have 8 here, and you have an ALU unit, and if you want to perform an add operations, what happens is that ALU will fetch the word from the memory, right, into a register. I didn't draw a register here, but mostly it will fetch it into a register, perform an add, and store it back to a memory locations. Okay? So to draw this picture, you know, let me draw it more accurately. If you have an ALU, ALU will be connected to a set of register. Okay, so in fact, this will be loaded to a register like that. And then after it's add, ALU can put it in a different register and then that will be fetched onto a memory. So we can call this an R1, R2, R3. The number of register resides on the processor board. I difference according to platforms. The more register you have, it's make the processor run faster. So register is faster than cache. It is the fastest memory device. One register can hold one word of data, right? So how many bits is depends on how many bit per word in that architecture. So one register, I say it can hold a word. 
This could be 16 to 64 bits. 